NGX Forms is a project that I'm using for a, a few things of mine. It's not actually mine, it's a GitHub project that I found. Uh, and the use case that I'm gonna talk about is an open source password manager called Passit, which is built in Angular uh, with a backend in Python and Django. So one problem that we often face is Building forms is very boring and tedious, and we have a lot of choices, especially in Angular, about how to go about that. There's template-driven forms, reactive forms, there's, give it, there's connecting it to things like NGRX or, or Redux. Why use NGRX with forms? Um, so usually your forms are gonna start out pretty simple. Maybe you have a login or a register form, and that's, a pretty simple use case, you can just kind of get by with template-driven forms. Uh, but then sometimes they get complex and template-driven forms start to not be the best use case for that. And you start thinking, oh, should I do reactive forms? Should I keep my state in the component or a few components or a service? Oh, maybe I should use Redux or NGRX to keep the state in. Um, so because of that, we can end up with inconsistent styles. Maybe login form uses template driven while a more complicated form with lots of different parts uses something else. Uh, another use case that I have is I like to share my logic between web and my app. If I start out really simple and maybe just use the DOM for validation, like set it, put an input tag, uh, set to type email, that gets me some really, really basic validation, but then that doesn't correspond to an app. Um, also, there was a talk at another Angular NYC meetup on using NGRX plus forms. So if you wanna learn more about why you should use NGRX with forms and sort of like more of the theory of that, check out that talk. Uh, but I'm gonna talk more about a specific library. So here's my use case. This is Passit register page version one. Um, and you can see it starts off pretty easy. Just a email, password, confirm. Uh, I'm gonna show you version two. And it gets a lot more complex. Unfortunately, we have the designer get involved and suddenly something simple gets really complex. So you can see we have different uh, it's sort of like a wizard. You almost start with this, it validates on the fly. I can go, uh, I can put in something silly and it doesn't work. Um, and we have all these different st steps. Next, next, next. We're gonna do a verify email address here. Um, suddenly what seemed like it would be simple and always stay simple, right? It's just a register form. Suddenly it's complex. And Redux is really great at this kind of thing, right? Uh, we have, we can keep track of what step we're on. We can keep track of validation. If the user wants to go back to a previous step, that just dispatches an action and we can get back there. So it's a really great use case for NGRX. But because I started this out as a template-driven form, I basically had to rewrite it. And so that kind of led me on this path of like, is there an easy, simple way to write forms that's gonna work both for simple login forms that never get complex? Um, and here's the login, as you can see remained very simple, and then keep using that for my other forms. Uh, so there comes NGRX forms, which is described by the author as proper integration of forms in Angular applications using NGRX. So effectively, it lets you define what forms are and use a directive to hook forms into your state very quickly without having to go through a lot of boilerplate of defining all your reducers very, very explicitly. Um, and that's kind of the general flow is where we'd have a component, maybe it's an input, and it's kind of syncing back and forth with our state. So it's dispatching an action when you type something, and that reducer is maybe setting some things like validation. Perhaps it's detecting your email is valid or invalid. So why use a library at all, right? Because you can just do this yourself. You don't have to use something like NGRX forms. So my reasons are it stops decision fatigue. Of course, this is a decision itself, but once you make that call, then you really don't have to have a conversation of template versus NGRX driven every time you make a form. And you don't have to worry about those more 
simplistic forms feeling like a lot of boilerplate, because it's actually not much boilerplate with NGRX forms. There's also upstream documentation and examples, and I love that. Whenever we get a new developer, I can say, hey, this is how we do forms. Here's a link to GitHub. Go read, and now you're going to understand everything, and you're going to get some, a community of people updating that documentation instead of an internal team trying to do that and perhaps getting some inconsistency or missing a few details. Reducing boilerplate, and then just not solving a new art not creating a new architecture to solve a very common problem. Forms are really basic. We've been creating forms since like the 90s with AOL and things like that. We really don't need to invent them every time we start a new project. NGRX forms also has a lot of drop-in actions and directives uh, and reducer functions to get going very quickly, but it's very easy to customize because they're really just pure functions so you can import some functions and run that through your reducer to get sort of very common default things to happen, like validation. But if you do feel like you need to break out of that and customize it even further, kind of like in my registration page when I started out simple and got complex, it's very easy to do because they're just pure functions. There's input and output, and you can modify that and not use some of the shortcuts that they give you. It also has native script integration, which I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So how to get started with NGRX forms. Basically, you're going to define your form state, and you're going to start just giving it a unique form ID. That's just a string that is going to uniquely identify that form as compared to others. You're going to define an interface. So if this is a registration form, maybe my interface contains email, password, password confirm, show confirm, and a few things like that. You're probably pretty used to doing that kind of thing already if you're working with a form. You're going to set your initial state. Again, a very normal thing to do. Uh, but now you're going to use this create form group state function, which uh, you can see here we're actually passing the form ID and some of our initials to that function. And what that is going to do is it's going to take your very basic form with just your values, and it's going to add a lot of state to it, such as is submitted, uh, different validation states is pristine. Probably a lot of words you might have seen in other validation libraries. You're going to see those same terms used here, but instead of having to define them in your NGRX reducer manually, it's actually going to add all that stuff for you. Next, we're going to define our actual reducer. Um, and this is a pretty long function, but it's actually all validation. We're going to use create form group reducer with update. That's kind of a shortcut function. You don't have to use this. You could just define a reducer. You could look at your action, look at your existing state, and just copy that state and modify it as needed if you want. But this shortcut, if you define this without any of this extra stuff, is going to just create all of it for you in one line. And this extra stuff are options that you can pass. All of this is just validation logic, and that also comes with the library. So again, it's kind of shortcut things for very common use cases. That's going to include validate, uh, some like required validation. There's a regex you can see. Um, we're going to make sure that the password and password confirm, that's just where you're confirming your password by typing it again, that those are the same. And if not, we're going to raise a validation error. And then there's a few boring things that you're probably very used to if you've ever really pass state anywhere in an Angular app, but uh, especially if you're using NGRX. Um, so all we're going to do is write a selector to get our form. Very basic thing if you're using NGRX already. We're going to pass that from a, a smart container to a presentational component um, and define that that's actually not a registration form, but it's a form group state with a registration form. Because again, we have all that extra metadata about it. And then we're going to use a directive. And that directive is right here, NGRX form control set, uh, is going to be set to the control for that particular form. So if our registration interface has an email field, we're going to do controls.email. And what that's going to do is sync that input with our state. So instead of having to dispatch actions ourselves, write all those actions, write the reducer to manage all that, this is actually going to just do all that for you. And of course, since you're using Angular, you're going to import the library into your module. 
So let's see what this does. This is now our form, our registration form that has Redux dev tools shown, and you can see some of the actions that happen. So as the user is typing H-E-L-L-O, we're going to get a set value each time that they do that, which is updating our state, and we'll get some diffs from that that we can see. We'll also notice a few extra things are happening. The first time somebody clicks into that, it might uh, set is pristine to, to true or to false as soon as somebody types something in. If they hit enter, it's going to hit send set is submitted to true instead of false. Um, and you can see a few there. There's mark as touch, um, just different things that you're probably going to pass on to like a CSS developer that so that they can target those kinds of classes and make you know this red show up when it's invalid or green show up when they type something that is valid. A few more features that it has, asynchronous validation. So let's say we're on, I'll, I'll actually just show you the a use case for that. Let's say I'm registering, and I want it to do something as I type. That's actually checking if that username is available kind of 300 milliseconds after I stop typing. <laughs> Similar to that, yeah. Um, all it has is kind of like a default set of actions and a, a default set of uh, places in your state so that it's very predictable where those asynchronous validation errors are going to occur. It's not writing that logic to like debounce for you. Obviously, it's not writing the server for you. You still have to have some endpoint that can do this check. You still have to write maybe an effect to, to know which server to ping and what is success and failure. But it provides some good defaults for you uh, so that you know where those validation errors are going to live in your state. Um, there's a lot of other shortcuts that I didn't mention, but different validators and things of that nature that you can just throw in your reducers for very common use cases. Uh, different actions. If you want to dispatch actions programmatically instead of just when somebody's typing, you can just call those and import them right from the library instead of defining them yourselves. And then they create this concept of a view adapter. And what that is is a Angular directive that is going to control the state of some component and sync that to your, your state store, and you can create your own. So for example, this is one I created for NativeScript, and that's how we can support NativeScript with NGRX forms. So effectively, I'm just defining when I put a text input into my NativeScript app, which is not a DOM thing, I can define, OK, when it changes, do this and a few other hooks for, for similar things. So now I can take an entire, entirely new system that has no DOM and also make it sync to my state. And I, it's a little bit of work to do once, but now I can just reuse those or publish them for other people to use, and we can get our native script apps built really quick and, and do the same thing we're used to doing on a DOM. And there's my example, so you can see some of the benefits of sharing the code here. Because I'm doing that validation in JavaScript and not separately in web and on the app, those errors are exactly the same. And if you look at the templates that generate both of those, even though they're, one is the DOM and one is XML for native script, they actually look really, really similar. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions, this is the library that uh, I'm referencing by Mr. Wolf Z. Um, and then the password manager is called Passit. It's on Passit.io if you want to look that up. And the code is on GitLab if you want to see some of the examples that I just spoke about or if you want to look at that effects code that, that we mentioned about how to do that debounce kind of logic with NGR effects. You're welcome to take a look. So that's a, that is something that I actually have done. If, if you're talking about like if you reload the entire tab. Yes, you have step one, step two, step three. Mm -hmm. The user finished step two, and now it happened that the page is reloaded. Yeah. So NGRX Forms doesn't deal with that directly. But because you're putting it in NGRX, mm -hmm. 
it's actually extremely easy to sync that with local storage. There's another library, I think it's just called NGRX Local Storage, that can let you define which keys in your state you want to sync. Uh, so you could selectively say, hey, this form, that's maybe like a pretty long form, I want to sync that to local storage. So they, they could even close the browser and come back to it, and you can control how it loads that state back in and, and get them right where they left off. Yeah, you mentioned that your sign form started with template-driven form before you transitioned over. Would it have been any easier if you started with a reactive form before transitioning? Uh, the basic answer is yes. If I would have used a reactive form just to begin with and perhaps even sync that with NGRX manually, I think that would, that would have definitely prevented me from having to recreate it outright. Um, but I think using NGRX forms makes it easy enough that I'm actually willing to do that all the time because writing all those actions for every little form, especially if it's like one input and it has a submit button, it just doesn't feel like you need all that complexity. But NGRX forms is going to like give you that level of, of power, but without a whole lot of work. <laughs> Yeah. Boiler plate for a user? Yes, exactly.